This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, advances in wound care that eliminate scarring. We truly regenerate the wound with no scar at all. Seeking an end to scars inside and out when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. The judge gave me the date that I need to go. So that's so hard. Oh, my goodness. I was packing like crazy, packing my clothes, packing my daughter's clothes. Oh, I'm sorry. One woman's never-ending deportation nightmare. Then... Alcohol, yeast dough, you know, if you're making cookies with your kids, and you got a chow hound, don't let him eat the raw dough. Keeping your pet safe and healthy this holiday season. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in-depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. If you live long enough, you're sure to acquire a collection of scars on your body. Sometimes these fibrous patches of skin take on a mystique that become part of our personality. Think of the famous chin scar that gives actor Harrison Ford his rakish charm. Or the notorious Z-shaped forehead scar of fictional wizard Harry Potter. But many scars are unwanted, even though we wouldn't have survived through evolution without them. Scars are a late evolutionary adaptive trait Humans are 100,000 years old. Mice, in contrast, are 100 million years old. So if you healed really slowly when you were a Neanderthal 100,000 years ago, you could develop an infection. There's no antibiotics. You could continually bleed and be debilitated, and you'd be eaten by a predator. So if you could heal quickly with a spot weld, so to speak, that may not look like the skin around it. Scars do not do that. They may not function like the area around it. Scars don't do that. But you could survive and procreate the species. That was the evolutionary pressure. So we've evolved for speed and repair, and we compromise form and function. That's Dr. Michael Longacre, professor of surgery and director of the Institute of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine at Stanford University. Years ago, as a postgraduate research fellow, he worked under Dr. Michael Harrison of the University of California, San Francisco, the first surgeon to successfully operate on a fetus in the womb. He asked me how embryos heal wounds because the child would, unborn patient, the fetus would be operated on and maybe there's a patch, like a Gore-Tex patch sewn on to replace something. And there was very little red around it 16, 18, 15 weeks later. And, of course, you and I developed redness around a Band-Aid maybe in an hour. So I took that question, and I began to work on different species, sheep and mice and monkeys and other things. And it turns out that you and I and every animal on Earth heals without a scar early in gestation when our skin is kind of gelatinous. And then when it becomes a barrier function, we're tight-skinned animals. We're not like Sharpays. You began to scar. Longacre became obsessed with the process of scarring, also known as fibrosis. He observed that while fetuses heal with little scarring, the elderly do too. That's because old skin loses its tightness. Its barrier function has deteriorated. In this way, old skin is similar to embryo skin, which also doesn't have a barrier function. Think of a bowl of jello. If I make an incision in a bowl of jello, it doesn't gape open because there's no residual strain or tension on it. But if I make an incision in a 14-year-old girl or boy's shoulder, it gapes open. So now I have to close that, and if I excise tissue, there's even a bigger amount of tissue missing. So the forces that it takes to close that wound is stronger than the forces trying to pull it apart until it's at equilibrium about 10 to 12 weeks later. So Humans have problems of overhealing in the form of hypertrophic scarring and rare keloids. So I thought, well, mechanical forces must play a role, and that led to 
disrupting them with a drug. Longacre's research has resulted in a medication that heals wounds in mice without scarring and without compromising the skin's strength. It's a significant breakthrough because although scars look tougher than healthy skin, they're actually weaker, not to mention unsightly. The color or the texture or it's a bare area. There are no hair follicles or sebaceous glands or sweat glands in a scar. So there's no secondary elements, hair and glands, number one. Number two, the uh, area between the cells, the extracellular matrix, collagen, et cetera, is organized as kind of a very differently than the nice basket weave nature of skin. And number three, despite all that collagen, it's only 80% as strong as normal skin at about eight to 10 weeks after your wound is healed. Longacre says he's now used the drug on pig skin, which is the most human-like animal skin, and the results have been promising. The next step is clinical trials in humans. If they're successful, Longacre says the benefits will be far-reaching. For me, personally, I would like to have cleft lip and palate because the entire burden of that child is as a consequence of scarring their whole life for growth and form. So for me, that's important. But the big picture here, there are about 100 million new scars a year in the U.S., about 80 million operations, and it's hard to know, with burns and lacerations and trauma, probably another 10 to 20 million. So this is a huge amount of new scars every year in the U.S. And people always ask me, Dr. Longacre, are scars important? I say, only if you have one, and especially if it's on your face. So my lens would be things like cleft lip and palate closure, burns and other things. But remember, there are 80 million operations. They all heal with a scar. People with disfiguring scars, especially facial ones, are often ostracized by society. That's certainly emotionally painful. But Longacre says scars actually pose a public health threat. He's talking about a different kind of scarring, though not the kind that are only skin deep. Scarring is not just skin deep. There are many other forms of fibrosis or scarring that are internal. About 45%, almost half of Americans, when it was estimated almost 20 years ago, die of a disease that ultimately tracks to fibrosis. So scarring is an example of an acute fibrosis. But there are many examples of chronic fibrosis. For example, scleroderma, uh, pulmonary fibrosis, liver cirrhosis, adhesions, right? After you have a stroke, your brain doesn't regenerate. There's a scar there. Or after a heart attack, there's a scar on the heart. And if it's large enough, you have pump failures. Inflammation in the pelvis gives you adhesions and infertility. So it's a huge problem, but it doesn't get the attention of cardiac disease or cancer. Longacre says the development of interventions for internal scarring may not be too far off. In the meantime, millions of external scars could be avoided in the future. Even scars you've already got could be erased. The average person lives a long time. Some people have many scars. So this would not only be an injection of vertiporfin when the surgeon is closing the incision at the end of the operation, but now you could say, oh, what about all those other scars that have existed for a long time? So one can imagine lidocaine cream being put on the scar or injection of lidocaine, come back in about 20 minutes and the surgeon excises the scar under local anesthesia in the office and then injects vertiporfin in the closure and then it's closed. So there's many, many, many millions of existing scars that could be revised. Harrison Ford without a scar? Maybe not. For many of us, scars are a badge of courage that we proudly display. But for others, scars are a painful disfigurement that bring much grief and pain. Burn scars are one example. You die from a burn or you live with pain and disfigurement. It's a horrible outcome, depending on how big it is. It would be great if you could minimize that scarring for those patients and dramatically change their life. You can learn more about Dr. Michael Longacre's research and about all of our guests by visiting our website at radiohealthjournal.org. Our writer-producer this week is Polly Hansen. Our production manager is Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. 
you can put someone into a psychotic break by going in and doing a cleanup behind their back. And I have seen that happen. Hoarding disorder and why it's not as simple as just throwing all that stuff out. Then dealing with chronic illness from childhood through your whole life. You can't let all of this management of your illness kill your spirit. All that and more on your 30th anniversary edition of Radio Health Journal. And that's Radio Health Journal for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more. And check Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify for a library of past programs. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and information about our guests at RadioHealthJournal.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Radio Health Journal.